ओम ईश्वर ओम मिश्र रिसर्च एंड एजुकेशन सेंटर फ्रेंड्स लेक्चर नंबर 11 ऑन फैसिलिटी लेआउट दिस इज पार्ट ऑफ लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन ऑपरेशंस मैनेजमेंट योर टीचर टुडे इज डॉक्टर सुभाष कक्कर ही इज पीएचडी फ्रॉम फैकल्टी ऑफ मैनेजमेंट स्टडीज दिल्ली यूनिवर्सिटी दिल्ली इंडिया ही इज एमबीए फ्रॉम एफएमएस दिल्ली यूनिवर्सिटी is BE Mechanical from Delhi College of Engineering, Delhi University, Delhi. He is Six Sigma Master Black Belt and SAP R3PP Consultant. He has over 40 years experience of corporate sector and academics. Presently, he is working as Director in Omisha Research and Education Center, Delhi. Today's topic of discussion is Facility Layout and there are four types of layouts which are generally used in the manufacturing units as well as in service industry. Facility layout means planning for location of following all the machines, utility areas, workstations, customer service areas, aisles, restrooms, internal walls, computer rooms, offices, toilets, cafeteria, etc. There are different designs for factories to support the strategic needs of different manufacturing businesses. There are priorities, primarily two classical types of layout from manufacturing and a hybrid layout that combines some of the advantages of these two. The fourth Classical layout type is called the fixed position layout. It means that the work object is not moved and all materials, tools and people come to it. There are other layouts also available like cellular manufacturing and group technology. The first one we are going to discuss is process layout, which is also called job shop layout or layout by process. Job shops contract to make items that are non-standard, so they usually are not produced in high volumes. Job shops therefore must contract to make a wide variety of such items in order to have a sufficient level of sales. The factory for such a business should offer a great deal of flexibility, but need not be designed for efficiency at high volumes. These companies purchase general purpose equipment that can be set up to perform a variety of operations and apply persons who can do a variety of tasks. People and equipment that perform the same general function are grouped in the same area. And if a manufacturing facility produces a variety of custom products in relatively small batches, the facility probably uses process layout. And there are certain advantages of this particular type of layout and this can be listed as follows. The first advantage is flexibility of equipment and personnel. Smaller investment in equipment because duplication is not necessary unless volume is large. Expertise, supervisors, for each department become highly knowledgeable about the functions under their direction. Diversity of tasks, work assignments make more satisfying for people who prefer variety. There are certain disadvantages also attached with this type of layout, which is process layout. Lack of materials handling efficiency, backtracking and long movements may occur in the handling of materials. Lack of efficiency in timing, work must wait between tasks, complication of production planning and control, cost, workers must have broader skills and must be paid higher wages than assembly line workers. Lower productivity because each job is different, it requires different setups and operator learnings. Examples of these layouts are all assembly line machines all painting machines etc. Now second type is product layouts. 
and we call it layout by product or flow line layout. If a company produces a high volume of one or few items, the facility can be arranged to achieve efficient flow of materials and lower cost per item. Special purpose equipment that quickly and reliably performs a specific task is purchased for each production step needed to convert the input material to the desired end item. The equipment is closely placed along a line in the sequence that each piece of equipment is used in the processing. The work item is moved along the line from workstation to workstation where each operation is performed. An objective is to make the path of movement no longer than necessary. Internally produced components or sub-assemblies should be made near the location where they are used in the process. Purchased items should be delivered to the location where they are to be used. If items must be stored, they should be stored close to their point of use. Since the sequence of work task required by the product dictates the layout, this arrangement is sometimes called layout by product. It is also called a flow line, production line or assembly line. The flow path does not have to be straight line. And product layouts typically use specialized machines that are set up once to perform a specific operation for a long period of time on one product. And actually, product focused layouts are divided in two categories. One is called continuous production, other is called discrete manufacturing. Continuous production like soft drink, manufacturing units, breweries, etc. Discrete manufacturing like automobile manufacturing plants. And there, there are hybrid layouts also available. Some manufacturing operations use a combination of classical layouts. For example, some of their products may have low demand volumes but may contain common components that are needed in high volume. The volume of a common component may be high enough to justify dedicating a flow line to its production. Thus, within a facility, one might find some areas with layout by process and others with layout by product. Then there are manufacturing cells layouts, a close grouping of equipment for performing a sequence of operations on multiple units of component or a family of similar components or products is called a manufacturing cell or a cell manufacturing unit. And similarly, we have group technology as a layout. Group technology are simply called GT is the analysis and comparison of items to group them into families with similar characteristics. GT can be used to develop a hybrid between pure process layout and pure flow line layout. GT enables companies that produce a variety of parts in small batches to achieve some of the economies of flow line layout without product standardization. The application of group technology involves two basic steps. The first step is the determination of component families or groups. The designs of all components are rigorously reviewed to find families of components that have similar characteristics. The general size and shape of the component in a family should be the same so that equipment of the same capacity and the same type of holding fixtures can be used in working on the family members. Ideally, these parts would also go through the same sequence of operations during the production process. However, some variation from a uniform routing may occur. And the second step in applying group technology is to arrange the plant's equipment into cells, each containing the equipment used to process a particular family of components. The result is a group of small plants within a plant. The processing required by each family can be performed within a cell where the machines and workstations are arranged to accommodate the common flow patterns for the parts family. That's all.